Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to have a look at Saddle Abbey. Something Saddle Abbey does have is quite an impressive collection of medieval slabs and we're going to have a wee look at them now. Here we have two priests, sadly one is now headless. We have our warriors here. The one on the left is interesting. He has what possibly might be his retainer unfastening his spurs and up above his head is a smaller figure the archaeologist reckon might possibly be his wife who would be buried with him the detail on this middle one who is massive is really quite spectacular it's impossible to be made out now but this stone was commemorated to uh, Neil McNair and it was commissioned by his son Donald. And say the inscription isn't there anymore, but slabs are really quite stunning. Not sure if you can make this out on camera, but our headless priest appears to have some writing under his name as well. This is quite a hard one to catch on camera as well. Uh, we do have a figure of a warrior. We also have a kneeling figure at the bottom. It's really quite cool. Okay, this slab here was actually much younger than the ones we have just looked at and it was unearthed quite recently and put together. The other notable feature here is the remains of a cross. We've just we've got the Berlin and we also have the sword. And I'm not sure if you can see but just at the top we have an angel. Saddle Abbey came about because Bishop Malachy of Armagh was looking somewhere to put his Cistercian Abbey. And this is where he chose. Somerled's son granted Malachy this ground in 1160 and the Abbey was born. There is some local tradition that says that Somerled himself may be buried here though a lot of other reports will say that he was buried on Iona. Here had not been built when Somerled passed away so in order for him to have been put here he would have had to have been lifted from somewhere and reinterred here so I think he probably is in Iona. Building was started in 1148 and monks were shipped over from Melfort and Armagh. These are the only remains of the abbey. It's just the north transept and the choir that is left. Reports suggest that the abbey was eventually abandoned about 1493. 
We don't often get hauntings in abbeys, but there's one in this one. The tradition says that a large black spectral hand has been known to chase people out of the abbey area. Uh, tradition also says that it chased a tailor the whole way from here to Saddle Castle, which hopefully we'll get a wee look at. The next bit of footage requires a disclaimer. It was late at night, Julie got very overexcited in her research and went off on the spider's web that unearthed some really crazy people and crazy ideas. So Saddle Abbey was one of those very strange places that when you research it, you come up with all sorts of things. Did you know? Yeah. No, <laughs> without <laughs> answering or listening. Uh, Joan of Arc, was it Saddle Abbey? Like one on time stuff. Yeah. So the story goes, nothing has been proven, but when you go into research, I tend to over research everything. I tend to try and look at every single possibility. Yeah, you do tend to um, end up on the spider web of somewhere researching something that wasn't even related to the subject. But I came across this website and they basically reckon that Joan of Arc was at Saddle Abbey. They believe that that's where she learnt her hand-to-hand combat with the best of the Highlanders. And on a very basic level, if you really wanted to believe it, she did have Scotsmen fighting alongside her and that bit is proven. Saddle Castle is part of the Saddle Estate and we will also drop down to the beautiful beach. I have to say it's one of the nicest places I've been, they're very welcoming. Uh, it is a private property but you're more than welcome to walk up the lane and go around the old ruins and go down to the beach. So this is Saddle House, the 16th century bastion of the Macdonald. The Bishop of Argyll, David Hamilton, built the original in 1508. It was captured in 1558 by the third Earl of Sussex on the bequest of Mary I. This was due to the fact that the Macdonalds had sided with the Irish and fought against the English crown. A lot of the stories that we do are McDonald's who have moved back and forth from Ireland quite a lot. There's quite a lot of McDonald's on Rathlin Island too. Successive McDonald's built on Saddle Castle. There is a very interesting trap door at the front exit. When this trap door is activated, the unwanted visitor will go flying to the dungeon below. In 1607, the Clan Macdonald lands were conveyed to the 7th Duke of Argyll by James VI. The castle then fell into disrepair, because clearly the Duke of Argyll had too many castles to keep in repair. I think this must be one of the most idyllic castle locations. This beach is where they filmed Mull of Kintyre, the 1977 hit by Wings. I shall put a link up there to our video that we went to see Linda McCartney's Memorial Garden. That's Paddy's milestone in the distance, or Ilsa Craig.
incidentally the haunted hand that chased the tailor from Saddle Abbey chased the tailor up here to the castle there are marks above the gate of the castle that they call the devil's handprint it said that he hit the front of the castle um, there are also traditional tales that say that the giant hand was attached to a giant at that stage Tradition's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of the stones used for this edifice and the previous one came from Saddle Abbey If you would like to see more beautiful Scottish countryside and some random historical facts feel free to subscribe, press the bell icon and you won't miss any of our adventures feel free to join me on Facebook and Instagram exploring Scotland's history. Thanks for watching.